Hey there, how's it going? It is your muscle building coach, Lee Hayward. And today I got a question sent in through the Total Fitness Bodybuilding app. And this one's from Zach. And Zach is saying, uh, Hi Lee, I'm 19 years old and I experienced an exertion headache at the gym today. It was extremely painful and he wants to know if I'm familiar with exertion headaches and, I know, and if I know what he's talking about. And yes, I do. Uh, it says, I've read a few places that you need to take a few weeks off if you've experienced an exertion headache. Is this necessary? I love the gym and I would hate to miss out on uh, not training for a few weeks at a time. Thanks. Now, before I get into answering Zach's question, I just want to kind of cover my ass here <laughs> with a little disclaimer. If you are experiencing chronic headaches or, or things that are you know, abnormal, go to your doctor and get it checked out. I mean, just don't take the advice of, of a random YouTube video as, you know, this is your medical advice, because it's not. I'm just going to share some practical tips that I've used myself and that I've shared with my personal coaching students. But if you have any doubts and you feel that something's not right, then get it checked out by your doctor. Right? If in doubt, get it checked out. You know, don't take this as medical advice. That's my disclaimer. Now, with that being said, let's get into Zach's question. Uh, exertion headaches are quite common. Uh, I've experienced them myself and, and pretty much anybody who really trains hard in the gym and pushes their limit is probably going to experience an exertion headache from time to time. Uh, you usually get them when you're doing big, heavy compound lifts, uh, squats, leg presses, deadlifts, uh, basically exercises where you have to exert a lot of effort, hence you know an exertion headache. Uh, you can also get them when you're doing uh, high intensity cardio, like if you're doing, uh, say, running sprints, or if you're cramming a lot of exercise into a given unit of time, uh, such as like a CrossFit workout, where they may have a, a circuit routine set up and you have to do as many rounds as possible, and you're really uh, pushing the limit of what your body can do. Uh, when you push the limits, obviously that's when you're at risk of getting an exertion headache. So if you experience an exertion headache, First off, stop whatever it is you're doing. You know, stop your workouts, just, just rack the weight, you know, stop your, your cardio or your CrossFit or whatever the heck you're doing. Stop what you're doing and just take a few minutes to relax. What I want you to do is just focus on deep breathing, uh, breathing into your belly. Uh, you can tell the difference between chest breathing and belly breathing because uh, when you're breathing into your chest, your chest rises in the chest breathing. That's not the best way to breathe. Breathe into your belly, so you kind of relax your shoulders, relax your body, and just let your belly expand and, and to contract with each breath. You know, you should feel your belly rise and fall with each breath, and that is good belly breathing, and it's good for relaxation. So take a few minutes to just really focus on deep breathing and to relax. By doing this, you should feel the, the tension in your headache start to ease up pretty quickly. I mean, it's pretty fast how this works. Uh, after that, do some stretches for your neck, your traps, and your back. Because a lot of times what's causing the, the exertion headache is we're carrying a lot of tension in, in our neck, our traps, and our back, and it's preventing proper blood flow. And so you're not getting a full blood flow you know, in and out of your brain, and, and you're, that's causing the headache and the tension. So some good stretches that you can do are just neck rotations. So just up and down like this and really take your time and feel you know the stretch in the front of your neck and then as you lower your head down feel the stretch in the back of your neck then you can do them side to side and each time you'll feel you know the opposite side really stretching out so do these several rotations back and forth probably like 10 or 20 each each direction and then you can go ear to shoulder and again, you're going to feel the tension in the, in the side that's stretching. So just do that. And you can, again, 10 to 20 repetitions for each side like that. And then you can do some uh, basic stretches for your back, like just bend over, touch your toes, and just hang there to let your spine stretch out. Uh, you can even do some uh, stretching for your, your rear delts and your traps, like so. Uh, in fact, I put a, a video series, uh, a playlist, on stretching for all your major muscle groups. And... Uh, one is there is included as a whole shoulder stretching exercise and it covers a lot of these. So I'll post a link to that stretching playlist uh, in the video description below. And if, if you can't click on that video description, whatever, you, you're watching this on a mobile device or something like that, if you just go to YouTube and search for Lee Hayward stretching, 
you should be able to find those stretching videos. So after that, so to recap, uh, stop whatever you're doing, focus on deep belly breathing just to relax your body, uh, stretch out your shoulders, uh, your neck, and, and your back, and then you should be feeling pretty good that you may be able to resume your workout. But I want you to resume it at a lower intensity. So reduce the weight, uh, stop your sets short of failure, take longer rest breaks in between sets. So I mean, you should be able to still complete your workout as provided you're not in agony and your head's not splitting. You know, if, if you feel that the, the pain has eased up just from the, the stretching and the breathing, then continue on with your training at a lower intensity. Just kind of cruise through the workout, kind of go through the motions, and you may want to do that for the next several workouts. So just train at a lower intensity and not pushing yourself to that threshold of maximum exertion. It's okay to stop your sets, shy of failure, take longer rest breaks, and even choose easier exercises. You know, instead of doing uh, heavy squats, maybe you'll just focus on some isolation work, leg extensions, leg curls. Uh, instead of heavy deadlifts, just do some pull downs and some, uh, you know, cable rows. Things like that, that are not going to cause you to have to exert as much effort in the gym. So just, I mean, you can still go to the gym, you can still train and all that, but just do it at a lower intensity and, until your body is feeling better. And as you're feeling better, you know, you go through several workouts with no headaches or no pain, then you can gradually build up the intensity over time. So over the next, you know, two to three weeks, build yourself back up to training at a higher intensity. And as long as, as you avoid hitting that threshold of the exertion headache, then you should be good to go. So hopefully this helps to answer your question, Zach. And if you have any other comments or feedback, feel free to post those down in the comment section below. And stay tuned for my next video coming soon. Take care. Over and out. Now one more thing that I forgot to mention is your nutrition plays a huge role in whether or not you get headaches. I mean, your level of hydration, your blood sugar, uh, your electrolytes, I mean, all these things come into play. So to help make sure that you have all the nutritional bases covered, I've got a free report called Bodybuilding Nutrition Made Simple. It's a PDF download and it's totally free. And I recommend that you check this out to make sure that you have all your fundamentals covered and that you're not uh, neglecting anything nutritional wise. So again, just head on over to my website, leehayward.com, and you can download Bodybuilding Nutrition Made Simple.